So you, you did, uh, you did uh, send it, you did upload from the University of Georgia, and he will tell us about non brain brainwebs, Calabiao three folds, and 5G SCFTs. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction, and thank you very much to the organizer for the opportunity to speak. So the goal of today is to describe some physics interpretation and application of a series of recent mathematical works around mirror symmetry for so-called log Calabiao surfaces, which include works of Gross, I can kill, Engel Friedman, I can kill you, and most recently, a joint work with Valeria Alexev and Ilya Agu that Agu talked about uh, yesterday. So all of these works are uh, in algebraic geometry, the algebraic geometry papers with algebraic geometry uh, motivations. And the goal of this talk is to uh, translate and explain the relevance of these works to some uh, physics question. And what I will talk about the physics aspects is some joint work with uh, Ilya Agu, which is in uh, preparation. Okay, so the physics context is the physics of a five-dimensional uh, superconformal field series. So among the many remarkable predictions of string and M-series existence of interacting five-dimensional quantum field series, and in particular five-dimensional n equal one superconformal field series. Okay, the fact that such a thing should exist goes back to Cyberg in 96, and then there's a very vast amount of literature studying these uh, series. And there are essentially two main uh, constructions to ways to obtain this theory starting from string or M theory. The first one uh, used singular geometry. You can start with M theory in 11 dimensions and compactify it on a canonical threefold singularity X bar. So here for all this talk X bar, you should think about it as being a non-compact uh, Calabio threefold, which is some local piece uh, near a singularity. And uh, so these singularities, these canonical threefold singularities, they are like three-dimensional version of ADE singularities for surfaces. They are singularities which appear at finite distance in the Keller moduli space of uh, Calabria threefold. Concretely, you should think about it, you obtain them by taking a bunch of two cycles and four cycles in a smooth Calabria threefold, and the volume of this cycle goes to zero. And when you do that, the M2 and M5 brains around these cycles become light. And the theory describing this light object is expected to define a five-dimensional uh, SCFT. So it's one construction where this theory is localized from a singularity in the geometry. Another way to produce uh, some localized theory is to look at intersection of brains. And you can consider intersecting brain in type 2B string theory in flat space. So I will describe more precisely the relevant configuration of brains. But you can see brains which have a common five-dimensional intersection where the five-dimensional SCFT will live. And there are various possible brains you can consider. You can include five brains, seven brains, oriented folds, S folds. And the general question for uh, this talk, which is a very old question, is essentially the relation between these uh, two constructions. And so first of all, let me say it's very much expecting the M3 construction, the geometry construction should be uh, the most general. And so the most precise question we'll try to address is starting from a system of intersecting brains in type 2B string theory, which define a five-dimensional SCFT. Can we realize the same 5D SCFT as M theory on a canonical threefold singularity X bar? And conversely, can we give an algebra geometric description of the class of singularities which appear uh, that way? <clears throat> and there are cases which are uh, well known. So if in type 2B you start with configuration of only five brains, then it's a very uh, classical story that I will review in one moment. The M3 dual involves a toric Calabria threefold uh, X bar. And I guess most generally, some kind of expectation that the relevant geometry should be some non toric geometry, but it will be part of this talk to try to uh, describe precisely algebra geometrically what this non toric uh, geometry is. So, what this thing is is known in uh, special cases for a particular configuration of five brains and seven brains. You get cones over del pezzo surfaces, possibly non-toric. And here I just listed uh, two recent work by Bourget, Kolinucci, Schaffer, Lemecki, and Ayas Tamago, Franco, Rodriguez, Gomez, which are maybe the most uh, recent papers which try to address uh, this question. And at the very end, I will comment on the relation of our work with uh, their work. Essentially, our work can be viewed as a generalization uh, of their work. Okay, so I will start here by an overview of the results before going into uh, the details of the arguments. So the, the first main result is that if you start from a consistent configuration of five brains and seven brains, then there will be an algebra geometric construction of a canonical threefold singularity X bar, non-toric in general, which will be the dual, the M3 dual of the configuration of brains. 
And here the key point which will need to be addressed is what do we mean by consistent? So maybe a better word for consistent should be maybe supersymmetric. So really a configuration of brains which define your a well-defined 5D ICFT. And will give some kind of algebra geometric characterization of consistency. And here is a result in the uh, other direction. So the claim will be that the canonical 3-4 singularity X bar which appear here has a very sh special shape. And conversely, all the one of this shape will come from this construction. Okay, so here is in words what this canonical threefold uh, singularity which appear looks like. So the claim is that it will be a type 2B dual brain description if it only if your X bar, which is three dimensional, complex dimension three, is actually a fabrication in surfaces over a base that I know by delta, which is just a, a disk. <coughs> Uh, containing zero in the complex plane, and the general fiber of this family is smooth, and the special fiber of the zero is a very explicit uh, singularity, which has some name in algebraic geometry. I will come back to them later. as a simple elliptic or cusp or degenerate cusp singularity. So here is a picture uh, to have in mind. Our X bar, the canonical 3 4 singularity which will appear, is not honestly three dimensional. It's really a fa one parameter family of surfaces. And the general surface is smooth, and only the one of the zero is singular. So you can think about this geometry as a total space of a one parameter smoothing of a surface uh, singularity. And so this singularity which appear, this surface singularity which appear on the special fiber, simple elliptic cusp degenerate, they are well known in the algebraic geometry literature. They are example of semi log canonical singularities, which were introduced by Collar Shepard Brent. Uh, in, the, in the 80s. And actually in the previous result, I should have been more careful, this result uh, describe a uh, dual of configuration of brains, which include five brains and seven brains, not more general type of brains. But uh, one expects that uh, if you also include extra objects like oriented folds or S folds, there will be a similar description in terms of smoothing of more complicated uh, semi-log canonical uh, singularities. But uh, I will not do that uh, in this talk because actually the algebra geometric part of this story is not fully uh, understood. Okay, so the plan of this talk, I will first review rather quickly the known story of webs of five brains, how they are related to Toric, Calabi of threefold. Then I will talk about webs of five brains with seven brains, which is the main uh, topic of this talk, and how we can think about them algebra geometrically in the language of polarized log Calabi of surfaces. And then how to produce an M3 dual Calabi of threefold from mirror symmetry, but a non toric version of a mirror symmetry. And the physically, the non toric nature of the mirror symmetry will be related to the existence of Warshit instanton from the A model point of view on mirror symmetry. And at the very end of the talk, I will comment on the fact that these Warshit instantons have a dual, very different interpretation as 40 and equal to BPS states of very particular series, which might also be of independent uh, interest. Okay, so I start at the very beginning. So in type 2B string theory, we have uh, PQ5 brains for every PQ co-prime uh, integers, which are related by uh, S duality. And one way to cook up a web of five brains, so you pick finitely many uh, PIQI, so that sum of PIQI is uh, zero. And then you consider type 2B string theory on uh, essentially flat 10-dimensional space, where uh, all the brains have a common five-dimensional space. And uh, the remaining uh, one-dimensional parts of the brain live inside some a copy of R2. Oops. A copy of R2 inside the, the space-time. And they look like uh, as on uh, this uh, picture. So in some appropriate coordinate, you can show that to get supersymmetric uh, configuration, the PQ brain, its one-dimensional part inside this R2, should be a line of slope PQ. Okay, so... In this picture, I just have a bunch of half lines going through the origin. There are various uh, PQ5 brains, and they all intersect at the origin. So this origin in the full space time is a five dimensional uh, locus where the 5D SCFT is uh, living. And in this case, there is a well known recipe to produce a Calabio threefold where the M3 dual is living. Starting from this configuration of a five brains, you can consider a dual polytop. Essentially, for every uh, PQ, you consider the orthogonal primitive vector, and you uh, add them up. You get this uh, dual uh, polytop picture, which is some lattice uh, polytop. 
And then out of this lattice polytop, you can make a toric geometry, a construction. You can consider the cone over this polytop. It will be a three-dimensional cone. And you think about this cone as a fan of an affine three-dimensional toric variety X bar. And this X bar will be the geometry we are looking for. It will be some affine singular geometry. And because of this uh, cone structure of the fan, actually this X bar has the same kind of structure as uh, advertised at the beginning is that the natural map to C. It's really a family of surfaces in a natural way, where the general fiber is a copy of C star squared, and the special fiber is one of these uh, singular surfaces. Okay, so see a singular geometry are a bit difficult to think about. There is something better you can do, better to visualize, uh, like essentially resolution of these singularities. So physically, it means going to the Coulomb branch of the 5D uh, theory. On the brain uh, point of view, it means perturbing the configuration of five brains in a kind of generic way so that they don't all go to the origin, but you perturb them. And then you connect them in between in some kind of balanced graph, which is this blue picture uh, on the screen. And uh, see, if you do a generic uh, perturbation, you get a tree valence graph, which is dual to a triangulation uh, of your polytop. And such data, if now you do a uh, historic construction for this triangulated polytop, you take the cone over that, over the triangulation, view that uh, as a fan, and take the corresponding toric variety, you produce a toric variety X, which is smooth, and which is a crepant resolution of uh, the, I find the singular toric variety X bar. And the thing which is important in this toric dictionary is that uh, if you think about what is the central fiber of this X, what X0 looks like, it looks like the web. So the faces of the webs and one dimensional correspondence with the irreducible components of X0. So maybe here is a better picture. So here in the toric situation, everything is toric. X bar is a affine toric threefold, which has is mapped to a one parameter base. The geometric fiber is C star squared. So this thing is just C star squared. In the middle, you get something where the singularity is. And X is a crepant resolution. So it's the same thing as X bar away from zero. And over zero, it's a bunch of uh, surfaces which, when you go to the singularity, gets contracted. And the picture of these surfaces is controlled by a, a picture of the web. <coughs> okay, so here I just uh, stated the duality. If you start with this web of five brains, it's one way to get this 5D SCFT, and I produce a recipe to produce a Calabria threefold. And the claim is that you get that with an M3 dual. And if you ask why is it true, so from a, can you derive it in a physics way, and there is a well-known derivation. And one way to do it is to, uh, rather than to start with your 5D theory, you compactify it on a circle. You get a 4D n equal 2 theory, and by standard series of string duality, it is the same thing as type 2B string theory. On a non-compact Calabria 3 fold Z, defined by this equation UV equal F, where F is a long polynomial with Newton polytop P. So you should think, about the curve f equal to zero as being a curve in C star squared, the cyber witten curve of the 40 n equal 2 theory, and the way it's connected to the brain web is that this curve in some appropriate tropical limit looks like the brain web. So essentially you get this curve by adding a small circle over the edges of the graph to produce a Riemann surface. And something which, is very, which will be very important later for the non-toric generalization is that this curve in C star squared has a natural compactification inside a toric variety YD, and in this compact uh, toric variety, this curve lives inside the linear system of the ample line bundle L, which is defined by the polytop P. So if you have a polytop P, you can view it as a momentum polytop of a polarized toric variety uh, YDL. So, so this picture naturally uh, compactify, and the equation of this curve is a section of this line bundle L. Okay, so this thing was a review of the known toric story. Now we'll start uh, introducing a seven brains, which will uh, put us outside of the toric world. And here we'll start making some comment about seven brains without five brains. We'll add five brains and seven brains together uh, in one minute. So you again start with type 2B string theory on these, maybe you might think of starting with flat space with this particular uh, R2 factor where the previous brain picture uh, was living. And now you can add to this picture a PQ7 brains, which fill all space time, except they are localized at some point inside this R2. 
And because we want to have uh, seven branches which ultimately can be put on top of each other to produce a conformal field theory, I will think of about picture uh, like that. So what is this picture? It starts by being uh, this R2. And then, uh, so previously on this R2 had natural coordinates where the five branches were straight lines. And now when I introduce a seven branch, seven branches introduce some um, uh, singularity in these coordinates. If you go around such a seven branch, there will be some monodromy for these uh, coordinates. And so the red line here is supposed to be some kind of monodromy cut so that when you go across this line, you, get, you apply this monodromy uh, transformation. So these, on this picture, the red cross are the seven branches. And actually, this monodromy is, is unipotent. It's like one, one, zero, one. So there's a particular direction, which is a monodromy invariant direction. And something I will do, which will essentially not change the physics, I can always move these red points along the monodromy invariant direction. So in this picture, uh, I take all the monodromy invariant direction going through uh, the middle point here, because ultimately, I want to push all the seven brains on top of each other. Okay, so we look at such a picture. But uh, physically, this picture will be uh, equivalent if we do so-called anani witten move. You could just push this one of these singularities along a monodromy invariant direction and then draw the cut in the other way. And you will get a different picture which describes uh, the same physics, and they should be considered as equivalent configuration of seven brains. And you might ask about classifying all these seven brains up to this uh, move. And our first claim which is some kind of algebra geometric uh, answer for this uh, problem. So the first claim is that these configurations of seven brains coming together up to these uh, natural moves are in one-to-one -one correspondence with some non-compact algebraic surfaces I will describe in one minute that I designed by you and that I call interior of log Calabiao surfaces. So topologically, this geometry is well known. If you think of seven brains in the F-theory context, U is just a topologically torus vibration over the previous picture, where over the seven brains you have a singular uh, torus fiber, where the particular uh, cycle shrinking depends on what is PQ for the seven brains. So, so this picture is well known as being a geometry which can be attached to a set, to a configuration of seven brains. What is maybe not uh, fully uh, known is the fact that this geometry as a complex algebraic variety can be described as the interior of a log Calabria surface. So you can write this geometry U as Y minus D, where Y is a smooth projective surface, and D is a singular normal crossing anti-canonical divisor. And I will explain in one minute how do you produce this data of Y and D. So maybe just to orient ourselves, if we start with something, if there is no seven brains at all, this geometry is just C star squared, and the compactification is like a toric compactification of C star squared. In general, this geometry, algebra geometry, it's a generalization of C star squared. It's an example of a cluster variety. So that tree contains many copies of C star squared. Tree for each presentation like that, where you push seven brands from infinity, there will be a copy of C star squared inside. And when you do such a move of pushing one singularity from one side to the other, it's like going to a different cluster chart, C star squared, on this, on this geometry. Okay, so here the first, uh, thing we learn is that you should think of configuration of seven brains have been attached to these non-compact algebraic surfaces U, which are like non if you're non toric generalization of C star squared. And now we are adding a five brains to the picture. So now we combine the two stories. You can start with a web of five brains as before, and you can try to make some five brains end on some seven brains. And so the fact that it should be interesting was suggesting a long a time ago, for example, by Deval, Fe, Anani, Iqbal, and Katz in 99. And there is some even more interesting theory where you allow several seven brains. Sorry, here uh, there is a typo. I mean, uh, several uh, five brains ending on the same seven brains, which was suggested by Benini, Benvenuti, and Tachikawa. And then you get this kind of picture. So here, the picture on blue, there is a web of five brains, as before. But now, uh, some of these uh, five brains are ending on some these red crosses, which are seven brains. And the condition for supersymmetry, so the PQ direction of the five brains should be the same thing as the PQ direction of the seven brains. So you can get this kind of picture. So in this picture, you only have 
each time a single five brain ending on the seven brains. In the picture on the right, here I have a multiplicity two, which means actually there is two parallel five brains on top of each other, which end on the same seven brains. Yeah, that's why I thought, so I, I mentioned it. Yes, there is definitely a, mi a misprint. I mean, several five brains ending on the same seven brains. Yeah. And so in particular, when you do that, the, in particular, the web you start with does not have to be generic. Okay, in my previous picture, I was drawing generic web, so the picture was trivalent. But here on the, the right-hand side of the screen, here I have a four-valent vertex. So I can start with a non-generic uh, web where I have several uh, five brains on top of each other and ask all of them to end on the same seven brain. And so here there is some kind of basic issue, which is not since the beginning of this subject, which is maybe not all choice of such pictures are consistent or super symmetric. So there are things called S rule or R rule or various type of consistency conditions. So the basic thing which can happen that I will not describe in details is that when you move one of these a right cross across a picture, then there is this anani witten transition where the number of five brains ending on the seven brains can change in some well-specified way. And sometimes if you start with a random picture and you try to do that, the number of five brains ending on the seven brains become negative, which is some kind of violations of supersymmetry. So you cannot start with arbitrary pictures with some kind of restrictions. And in the literature, you can find various proposals for what the correct set of restrictions should be, but maybe not a, something which look like fully 100% one-to-one working proposal. And here we'll give some kind of algebra geometric reformulation and we'll see from this algebra geometric reformulation why it is actually a very subtle problem. So algebra geometrically we start with, okay, let's start with such picture. So we just first start with a blue picture. It's a web of five brains as before. And so we know that attached to this picture, you can draw a polytop. And this polytop defines your toric surfaces, y bar, d bar, and a line bundle, l bar. And now, using the seven brains, we'll modify this geometry. So here is uh, this polytop. You already think of this polytop as being a picture of this toric surface, uh, y bar, d bar. So this toric surface is a place where the, like the mirror curve lives in the c star squared of this toric surface. So how do I modify this geometry to include the seven brains? <coughs> the seven brains uh, correspond to some unbounded edges of my web. And these unbounded edges correspond to rays in the fan, which correspond to boundary divisors of the toric variety. And so what I will do is each time I have a seven brain, I will look at the corresponding boundary divisor on my toric variety, for example, if I take the seven brain uh, here, the corresponding uh, boundary side of my toric variety will be here. And what I will do, I'll take a point on this boundary uh, component and I will blow up this point up. I blow up this point. So this thing is a non-toric operation because I blow up something which is not a torus fixed point, but a point on the boundary. So, so here in this example, I had six, seven brains I was adding so I will blow up six points, and what is in red on the picture are the exceptional curves I produce when I do these uh, blobs. Okay, so when I do this non toric blob, I get the new surface Y, and what I denote by D is a strict transform of the toric boundary uh, D bar. And then the interior U I was talking about is really Y minus D. So the non toric geometry U, which is determined by the seven brains, is like if you remove the boundary of this picture, you will get some non-compact algebraic surface, which is a cluster variety I was talking about uh, before. Okay, so uh, this thing until now only see uh, the web of five brains and the set of seven brains, but how do they interact together? This thing will affect the choice of the line bundle, ample line bundle on this non toric uh, geometry. So if I have some seven brains like here, correspond to a blow up in the geometry which correspond to some exceptional curve EI. And on these seven brains, I have some number of five brains ending and I call this integer AI. And I use this data to cook up on this non toric geometry some ample line bundle L, which is a pullback of the line bundle L bar which come from the toric story involving only five brains. 
And then I subtract to it uh, some of I, A, I, E, I, where the E, I has an exceptional divisor. So maybe this notation is more a divisor notation. The di divisor corresponding to the line model L is the one from L bar minus some of the I, A, I, E, I. So concretely, I will discuss in one moment, if you have a curve which is defined by a section of this line bundle, then this curve will intersect the exceptional divisor EI in AI, in AI points. Okay, so here, essentially, what I explain here is an algebraic geometric recipe. We start with a picture. You produce a surface and a line bundle on it. And now the claim will be that what you started with is consistent, is a kind of supersymmetric configuration is a line bundle you uh, constructed is satisfy some natural positivity condition. Let's say if it's, if it's an F line bundle, if it has a non-negative intersection with every uh, compact curve in your geometry. And actually there is few special case I will, uh, extra condition I will skip for now. Let's just remember that the kind of algebra geometric condition which will determine if the starting picture is consistent or not is a positivity condition. Is this is line bundle an F uh, or not. And here you see why this condition is actually extremely subtle, and in my mind, it's kind of explained why in the physics literature it's, it looks like a difficult question. Is that this surface Y we construct this, you start with something toric and you blob many, many points. Actually, the cone of algebraic curves inside such surface does not have to be finitely generated. It might be finitely generated in, uh, in special cases, but in general, it's not. So actually, to check this uh, nefness condition, you need to check, it's not obviously reducible to checking intersection with finitely many curves. It's a kind of uh, non-trivial algebra geometric uh, condition, which has no obvious combinatorial uh, interpretation. And here there's some lemma which connects this condition, which may be the uh, most uh, obvious picture, which is that, so if this brain is consistent in this sense, then there will be a smooth curve, you see, inside this non toric geometry defined by a section of this line bundle, which will really be the same, uh, the analog of the mirror curve in the toric situation. So the, here is a picture of what the curve looks like in blue. So it's really a curve which in some appropriate tropical limit should look like this brain ending on some seven brains. Okay, so in the toric situation, it's just a curve in C star squared. But now it's no longer a curve in C star squared. It's a curve inside a non-compact holomorphic symplectic surface, some cluster type uh, varieties. And the physics interpretation of this curve is exactly the same as in the toric situation. So if you compactify your 5D theory on a circle, you get a 4D N equal 2 theory. And the claim is thing the same thing as type 2B on the Calabrian 3 fold Z, defined by UV equal F. But now the difference is that F is a defining equation of this curve inside this non-compact Q. So the curve is no longer in C star squared, but inside this <coughs> a cluster generalization of C star squared U. And as in the uh, toric situation, if you go through a usual sequence of string dualities, you would expect that the M3 dual that you are looking for, so the canonical threefold singularity, such that M3 on it and generate the same, M3, the same 5D CFT as a web of five brains with seven brains, should just be the mirror of this uh, non compact Calabria threefold Z. But now the main issue is that this Z we're no longer inside standard toric uh, mirror symmetry. So the mirror will not be uh, toric and it's a pretty not completely obvious starting from CC, how do you produce the mirror? <coughs> and uh, so I will say a few words about uh, how to do that. So this thing will be some kind of a formulation of what Uli described yesterday uh, in our talk in a more uh, algebra or geometric way. So first we'll do something which actually is well known in some uh, special cases. We will, so the way our story starts is as a web of five brains and seven brains where five brains end. So if you're on the seven brains are near to infinity, but then you can try to move the seven brains inside and see what happens. <coughs> and here some uh, statement is that if what you start with is consistent in the algebra geometric sense uh, I've defined, then there is no obstruction to push in the seven brains along the monodromy invariant direction until they are no longer attached to any five brains. So what do I mean by that? You could try to push a seven brains, for example, a C1 here. I push it, I push it, I push it, and at some point I hit a vertex of the web, 
And here there is some Anani uh, Witten transition happening. If I try to do it further, the local picture uh, will change, of the web will change, in particular the number of brains attached to the seven brains will change. And uh, what the lemma is saying is that you can do it, suggest so this number decrease, and maybe continue, it will decrease again, until at the end the seven brains is attached to uh, nothing. So here is a well-known uh, case. If I consider this uh, a picture which is related to a local del pezzo, you can just push the singularity inside, and here it's easy. Just as the first time the singularity cross is no longer get attached to anything, and so you get this picture uh, on, the, on the right. And the reason why on the right uh, the blue picture looks like some curvy thing is because on the, on the left it looks like some uh, broken piecewise in your thing, but once I've pushed the singularity inside, this blue thing while crossing the monodromic cut are actually going straight. So even if they look bent, actually they are straight because of the monodromy. So actually this is, the thing is actually a single straight line. There is no corner in the blue picture, in the blue picture here. And okay, so this example is, as I kind of well known because it's related to like cone over non thoric uh, del pezzo surfaces. So the claim is that it's possible in general for any uh, consistent configuration of five brains with seven brains, which is yeah, consistent in the way I've defined. So here is some uh, more complicated uh, picture. You push these singularities inside and then you get this, uh, this kind of picture. One of the seven brains live inside and are no longer attached to, uh, to anything. And maybe I should have mentioned that the fact that this thing is possible, some of our definition of consistency use some algebraic geometry and the proof of that is some kind of algebraic geometric argument. So there will be, in, in some way I will not take the time to explain, there is somewhere some, if you want to produce a minimal model or some geometry, you need to do a sequence of flops. And this move, the, so the fact that this flop exists is consequent from general by rational geometry and translate into the fact that in the picture it's always possible to do that if you start with something which is consistent. And now we'll just uh, use uh, this picture to produce uh, the mirror. So recall that the mirror is supposed to be a family of surfaces of a one-dimensional base. And what we'll do first is to produce a central fiber uh, X0. And to do that, we can take inspiration from the toric situation. So in the toric situation, the brain, is the, the web, is essentially a picture of this central fiber, the various faces of the brain as a various irreducible component of this central fiber. And here we want to do the same. You want to think about this picture, this final picture where the seven brains are inside. We want to think about them as being some, a picture of a normal crossing surface where the various face are various uh, irreducible surfaces glued together according to the picture. And how to do that, so first you can start with the blue picture, so forget the seven brains. Just start with the blue picture, and starting from the blue picture, we know how to produce a toric jaw. Okay, so we know how to produce a toric jaw that I denote by XW, which is a toric uh, Calabria threefold, and as I denote by XW, if you start with the web W, and which is possibly singular because this blue web you start with is possibly uh, singular. It's possibly non-generic, like there is four valent vertices here, for example. So the corresponding dual toric geometry will be uh, singular. And then the geometry we care about, the non-toric geometry, will be obtained as a non-toric smoothing of this toric geometry. So the statement is that if you know to push these seven brains so that at the end they are no longer attached to any five brains, then there will be a recipe on the algebra geometric side starting from the toric uh, x0, xw0, how to deform it to uh, make it non-toric and to make it dual to uh, this picture. So roughly, the operation of uh, pushing the seven brains and getting some blue side smooth is really, in the geometry means, uh, take one of these toric surfaces, for example, here there is this face of the blue web, which starts its life as being a toric surface, and then pushing these two singularities inside means this toric surface with this toric boundary deform into a non-toric surface with a non-toric boundary. And the fact it's possible follow from some deformation theory, actually quotient singularities that I will not go into, but you, which can be argued. And it's not, ob like, it's not something which is obvious. You, you need to be kind of lucky to see, okay, what kind of singularity here in your toric surface is a quotient singularity of a type 
which happens to admit a nice one parameter smoothing, and you can use that to construct your non-toric uh, geometry. Okay, so that way you construct this normal crossing surface X0, so maybe here's a better picture of what we are doing. Here, what I try to explain is starting from the picture with the seven, with the seven brand inside, you cook up this X0, this normal crossing surface. And once you have this X0, you will produce the geometry X, the threefold, by smoothing this surface in a one parameter family to get a full threefold X. And again, by some deformation theory, you can argue such smoothing uh, exists. And in addition, once you have this X, you can argue that all the, all the compact surfaces inside X0, you can contract them to a point <coughs> to get your geometry X bar, which will be the singular geometry with a canonical threefold uh, singularity. Okay, so at the end of the day, starting from our consistent web of fabric and seven prints, there is really an algebra geometric recipe to construct this X bar, which is in general a non-toric uh, canonical threefold singularity. And actually along the way, we produce actually a crippled resolution of it by this a picture of moving uh, seven brains inside five brains. Okay, so this thing is a sketch of the, of the main construction starting from a consistent five web of five brains with seven brains how to produce this geometry. <coughs> and I claim that you can do the converse. So actually it's a kind of almost one-to-one -one correspondence. If you start with such picture, then you can run a mirror symmetry backwards in a way that will not uh, explain to produce a log calabrian surface with a positive enough line bundle which will correspond to a web of five brains with seven brains. So actually all the geometry which appears from the picture we started with algebra geometrically, you can just say, okay, there are all the canonical threefold singularity which look like that. So they look like smoothing of a central fiber X zero bar and if this X0 bar is in the small list I've given, simple elliptic degenerate curves for curve singularity, then this thing will come from a type 2B uh, brain description. It's a kind of algebra geometric characterization of the uh, geometry uh, you get. So maybe what I just explained here might seem a little bit mysterious. In many, in many places I said use deformation theory to produce this uh, non-toric uh, geometries, but you might ask, can we, can we be more explicit? How do you get this non-toric deformation? And in particular, from a physics point of view, what happens? And uh, actually, uh, physically, there is something which will produce for you uh, the uh, deformation. So here is a statement which is that you can produce this non-toric geometry. Let's say you can produce the equations in some kind of algorithmic way from some algebraic gadget called a scattering diagram with initial rays coming out of the seven brains. So scattering diagrams are objects which have been introduced in the mathematical mirror symmetry literature starting with Kontovich Sommerman, Gross and Zibert, Gross, I can kill, and so on. So they look like uh, the picture uh, on, the, on the bottom. So the picture we really live in the R2 where the brain, where the web was drawn and the seven brains uh, were drawn. And there will be some rays coming out of the uh, seven brains. And these rays are decorated by generating series. And uh, when the two rays uh, cross, then there will be algorithm to uh, produce new rays with new generating series uh, attached to them. And the claim is that if you have uh, such a picture, you can use it to cook up a geometry, which are the kind of non toric geometry uh, we are producing. And from a physics point of view, see what's going on is actually uh, completely natural, is that if you do a mirror symmetry, you are essentially starting with a A model and you try to construct the, the space, the mirror, and the space of points uh, on the B side. And on the A model side, you can have watch its instantons. And here see is a picture on the base of these rays, which come together and produce new rays. The claim is that they are essentially a shadow of holomorphic curves, which lives inside this uh, surface uh, U. So there's essentially holomorphic disk in this uh, non-compact uh, geometry uh, U with boundary on this uh, torus fiber. And so if you are entirely in the toric situation, if there is no seven brains, then there are no uh, such a thing uh, at all. So in the non-toric situation, you have seven brains which, are, which produce singular fibers 
which makes the existence of this curve uh, possible because now you have cycle uh, collapsing as its singularities and so this holomorphic curve can close up to produce such a picture. And these holomorphic curves are exactly the kind of watch it instance on correction if you think about the XYZ picture of, of mirror symmetry for this Lagrangian uh, torus abrasion. Okay, so uh, algebra geometrically, there is by now a full theory of so-called punctured chromophoretic invariants developed by Abramovich and Gross and Zibert that we might use to make this uh, picture precise. And I guess Mark Gross will talk tomorrow in his talk about this uh, algebra geometric aspect of uh, mirror symmetry. Okay, so uh, what I claim is that uh, starting from the picture of seven brains, you can algorithmically produce a picture which looks uh, like that. You have uh, some explicit rays, and when they cross, you have more rays, and so on, it's an iterative uh, process. And once you know this picture, there is some uh, recipe to produce some mirror geometry. So here, let me make a comment. So there is a case which is easy, which is if all five brains ending on seven brains are parallel. So for example, what happens here on the picture on the, on the left, where I push the right thing, they are all parallel. Like it's all PQ, but all the PQ are all parallel to each other. So in this case, the corresponding piece of the scattering, the rays which I emitted, are all parallel, so they do not intersect. They do not talk to each other. And so the picture is, is really easy. And we can show that if you run the algorithm starting from this scattering picture, and work out what is a non-toric mirror, in this case, you can write down explicit equations, and you recover the explicit results of uh, Bourget, Colinucci, and Schaffer-Nameke that they obtain in completely different methods. So essentially what they use is that if everything is along the same direction, you can make some kind of dimensional reduction or t-duality to go to a different frame, a different type 2 frame, and then they do some gauge theory argument for what the equation should be. And here we recover them as a special case of our general formalism. And here you see uh, why uh, things are complicated in general. So in general, if, you, if your seven brains are not, if your five brains ending on seven brains are not all parallel, then the rays emitted by the seven brains will intersect, and then the scattering will be very complicated. You will produce more and more and more uh, scattering, and writing, if you want explicitly your non trick mirror is in principle possible algorithmically, but very, very uh, complicated. Okay, I will just uh, end by some kind of aside, which is here, so essentially here, the key physical input, the key difference with the non-toric situation and this toric situation, I really see the watch it instantons. And uh, the last comment is this watch it instanton, uh, you can think about them in a dual way as BPS states in some n equal to a 4D uh, system. And uh, so, so what should not confuse, it's not related in any simple way to the 5D theory I've been talking about. It's not the 5D theory on a circle, it's something else, it's some auxiliary uh, theory. And you get this auxiliary theory by taking just a D3 brain probing your configuration of seven brains. And that way you get a 4D n equal to theory, which is a rank one theory. So its Coulomb branch is identified with, with, with the place where this picture is drawn. So essentially, you have some uh, D3 brain, which is just a point in this picture, and the D3 brain can move around, and so you get a one-dimensional uh, Coulomb branch. And equivalently, you can think to an M5 brain wrapping a torus in this torus vibration uh, I was drawing. And now by a sequence of uh, standard uh, string theory dualities, you can uh, see that the watch it instantons I was talking about are really uh, BPS states of this theory because you can think about it as string junctions between the D3 branch and the seven branch. It's one way to think about this graph in this picture, the string junctions. Or uh, equivalently, you can think about them in this picture as a projection of this kind of uh, polymorphic curve, which are some kind of M2 branch. And in the, M in the M theorization, they will also define BPS states uh, of this theory. And from this 4D n equal 2 theory point of view, the scattering diagram I've been uh, describing is some kind of way to organize uh, the conservation suburban wall crossing formula for BPS states in this 4D uh, n equal 2 theory. So the fact that you have two rays colliding 
which produce new rays is a reflection of the fact that in some places, in the Coulomb branch that is 4D and equal 2 series, sometimes you have some VPS states and some, you know, along some walls, they disappear. Some other might appear, and all that, which is described by the quantization wall quantization formula, is described by, by this picture. And so here you might believe that this picture indeed might be complicated because of actually the VPS state of a random 4D and equal 2 series can be quite complicated. So the complication of this picture is, uh, is as complicated as what you can find uh, in this context. <coughs> okay, so essentially, so the conclusion was to go from this toric to a non-toric situation of these washed instances. And if you want, you can think about them in this dual way, as example of 4D and equal to uh, BPS states. And I will stop there. Thank you for your attention. <coughs> Thanks for the beautiful talk. There are questions? So this mirror curve, is this, um, in which way is it given? Can you sort of uh, have a Bergman kernel on it and uh, so that you do a topological recursion on it? Yeah, Would so it's something that, indeed, so, so you can think of this story as really some non-toric version of usual uh, toric mirror symmetry. And so everything you might like or know in the toric situation, you might ask either a version for yeah, it, yeah. this is not toric yeah. situation, for example, can you do topological recursion? And I don't know the answer to that. So, so usually the general setup for topological recursion is like a curve in some holomorphic symplectic surface. Right. And I guess it's well known how to do it if your, cur if your curve lives inside maybe the cotangent bundle to another curve, or in the toric situation if it lives inside C star squared. So here, the question is how to do that if your curve lives inside some kind of cluster surface. What is the proper way to do that? And I don't know the answer to, to this question. Okay. But it is, there should be one way to do that, which then should compute the topological string of this non-toric Calabio threefold we are producing. Uh, that would be great, thank you. Okay. So the 5D superconformal field theory has an SU2 times U1 symmetry, SU2R symmetry, and U1 for the instanton uh, current. And so I'm wondering if you turn on uh, gauge fields for that, then non-dynamical gauge fields for that, is there a geometrical picture in terms of either M theory or in terms of our brains? So, uh, to just to check, you mean you say like non dynamical So do you still expect that? Take the yes, you two are symmetry of yeah, the five yeah, D super right. yeah. Introduce a gauge connection for that. Yeah, I don't know what his deformation correspond to. Even in the traditional toric situation, I don't know the answer to, to this question. But maybe we should talk more. So in the standard picture of this M theory on toric geometry, yeah. you have the 5D FCFT, right? The BPS states can be encoded in the BPS quiver, which okay. is the quiver you can read just from the toric diagram by the brain tiling, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and also the word crossing is just the quiver mutation at that level. So do you have any thoughts or comments like uh, based on your last point? Like uh, what kind of BPS quiver should I think of from this generalized toric polygon or yeah, that's right. so, so, I mean, the only comment I can make is that there are several works in the physics literature which try to address this question, like to like produce some kind of BPS quiver since it's a non-toric uh, situation. And uh, so the only thing I can say is that it, once you have a, a well-defined non-toric Calabria threefold geometry X, there's a well-defined mathematical question, which is study the derived category of this X. Can you produce an exceptional collection and can you get a quiver out of that? And so this thing is a natural question which has not been explored. So yeah, in the physics literature, there are various proposals for how to do that, I guess in some cases, how, how to produce some quivers. And now the kind of natural question is, is it really true that these quivers describe the derived category of these geometries? And yeah, it has not been explored. Yeah, can I can ask a question. In the same vein, do you expect this, uh, these 40 BPS states that you mentioned at the end uh, were representing the watching instantons to be a subset of the BPS spectrum in this uh, five-dimensional SCFT compactified on the circle? 
No, so I think it's 240 theory are really, um, they are really uh, distinct. So, so in the language of this uh, non-compact holomorphic symplectic U, you get the 4D theory related to the 5D theory on a circle by one way to say it on the M5 brain inside this curve inside this geometry U. So maybe you can just, so you have this geometry U, which is this torus uh, vibration over some base, and inside that I have some curve C. And if you take a M5 brain on C, you get the theory which is related to the 5D theory on S1. But uh, the worksheet corrections are related to the 4D theory which is obtained by putting an M5 brain on, on the torus in uh, these vibrations, which in general are two different things. So there might be a very confusing case where C has genus one, and then maybe by apical rotation it happens to be the same thing. So actually in the example I drew, it might be the case that this is one of these weird examples, but from a general viewpoint, there are like two different uh, 4D and equal to theory which are not related in an in a obvious way. Any other question? Okay, well, in that case, uh, let's thank uh, Pierrick for the very nice talk. That's it for today.